In today's video, we're going to go over DSM settings and what to properly set them at. So let's get started. So in your general, um, you're going to have your email address, your name, last name, um, your currency, time zone, um, and your PayPal account email address, which this should already be set up as it is. Make sure your time zone is correct. I know it's um, there is a ton of choices in here, but uh, take your time and find the one um, that your time zone is in. Um, don't set it to a different time zone. Now let's go over to dashboard. So the dashboard are your dashboard alerts. Um, so this are things like alert on items out of stock more than three days. You can change this. Um, I keep it at three days because if it goes you know, anything above three days, it's probably not going to um, come back in stock. And I think under three days is not enough time for the item to come back in stock. The next one is alert on items last sold more than however many days. So what this is going to do is in 30 days, it's going to alert you that nothing has sold. So the rule of thumb that we go by is that we want to get rid of an item 60 days with zero sales in your store. So we just want to go ahead and delete those. But this will alert you on 30 days so you can see if there's if there's any action on it, if there's any views on it, you know, things like that. Alert on items with no sales more than 30 days. Um, so this is sold in 30 days and this is sales in 30 days. So we keep it at default. Um, we think 30 days is a good mark to check. 60 days is the mark to chuck it out of your store. Alert on listings with less than 10 views. So you can change this number if you like. Um, again, this is a default setting. So this will alert you if you uh, have an item in your store and there's absolutely no, uh, no action or there's no views on it. So you can set this to whatever you like. Um, alert views with listings already seven days live. So it's going to alert you on views with listings already seven days live. And the last one is alert on missing tracking numbers for sold items older than three days. So the three days goes hand in hand with your with your eBay policy of that you have to upload your tracking number within three days. Um, so this so this is a, a good um, number to keep and then you would just hit update. The next one is Lister. So your rapid lister settings, um, we do, uh, obviously we do eBay, so we wanna make sure um, that the target is in eBay. Your default location, um, there's been a lot of controversy going on with eBay right now. Not having it say multiple locations, eBay is cracking down and they are um, giving you warnings and they are suspending accounts if it is not correct. So you cannot have uh, multiple locations anymore it must say where you are at which I'm going to do another video on that um, later on down the line so here is your break even and your profit percentage so we'll spend just a minute on this so your break even is going to be uh, your eBay and PayPal fees so typically speaking your pay your your PayPal is going to be 2.9 percent and your your uh, eBay fees are going to be 10 percent now, once you get um, to be more of a larger seller and doing more product and doing more business, your percentage will drop a little bit. But for, but for the meantime, we're going to say it's 10% and 2.9. So if you use a break even, you're going to want to use between 13 and 14%. So 14% will give you just a little bit of cushion. And then your desired profit percentage you're gonna to wanna to stay like seven, eight, nine percent because we want these two numbers to match anywhere from 19% to 22%. So if you have 13% in here, then go from like seven to nine percent to match 19 to 21% um, percent because these two numbers are added together. Now, as you can see, I do not have the break even in mind. I have a flat 20% in my desired percentage. And what does that mean? So simply what that means is DSM shows you your profit on the item when it's sold. So if you have your break even and your profit percentage set, it's going to show you a true profit. If you have zero inside of here and you only have your 
desired profit percentage filled out like I do, it's not going to be a true profit that DSM shows you when you sell the item. You still have to take out your eBay and your PayPal fees out of that desired profit, and that is what your profit is. Okay, so it's basically a difference of seeing your true profit and not seeing your true profit. You can use bad word filters. So words that, like keywords that you don't want in your listings, you can put in here. And DSM will take care of that. I have my VAs manually go in and take out what I don't want. So I don't depend on DSM for a couple of things. And sometimes they catch it, sometimes they don't. So I just have my VAs double check everything and make sure it's not in there. Um, you want the block Vero checked. You want the enable auto filling the items checked. So basically what the Vero does is it, it, it protects you from listing anything you're not supposed to list that is copyrighted. And the auto filling um, item helps you with when you sell an item, it'll automatically relist without you having to go in and relist it. So it kind of saves you from putting in five and six um, quantities inside of your listings. Now, if you have a hot selling item, then, then you're gonna wanna put in you know, multiple quantities inside. But if it's just for something that sells here and there, it just relists it automatically so you don't have to do anything. Um, the logo here, um, I mean, you can put a logo, what it does is it'll put your logo inside of the picture um, on eBay. But what I've noticed is, is that your picture cuts off the uh, picture of the product and it doesn't look very good. So the business policies, these are already set up already in your eBay store. So whatever your eBay store has, it pulls over into your business policies. If you're not sure about your business policies, then ask one of us uh, and we will go in and double check your policies for you. So if you have a policy fixed, then you can just come back in here and hit refresh. Then you hit update. So your monitor is settings inside of your sources. So Amazon, uh, you can check if uh, Amazon Prime protection, um, when item is out of Amazon Prime program, DSM tool will automatically place it in protection mode, so therefore it will not list it. Uh, you can check get prices from suppliers table or treat add-on items in stock. You can set those two. We don't do very many, if at all, in Amazon, um, so we don't really pay too much attention to this, but if you do, you might wanna pay attention to this. Let me go up here. So this is protection. So change target to zero or double the target price. So this is in protection. So protection mode is on when the item goes out of stock um, or free shipping. So you can either change it to zero, which it won't show at all, or you can double the price. So if you double the price, the customer's probably not gonna buy it anyways. So it's just probably easier just to keep it to zero. And then we click on Walmart. Uh, so we are big Walmart sellers. That's about probably 95 to 8% of our listings is Walmart. So we have third-party suppliers. So this protects from you listing from third-party suppliers. Um, this will also add $5.99 to anything that you list that's below $35, which is really nice because it automatically adds the, the uh, shipping for you. We have everything else on for alert item when it's out of stock, alert uh, when item has shipped for more than three days, which is um, our, our eBay preferences, which is good, and then enable monitoring. You hit update, and then we go to sales and orders. Sales and orders um, is um, a very cool feature to have. Uh, what it does is you can put in messages that it automatically sends to your customer. So the first one is the pricing strategy. So automatic resale. Um, so if you've listed an item with a quantity um, equals to three, for, uh, for instance, this option will set it back to three automatically. Uh, when it will, so, so basically when it's sold out of eBay, it'll, it'll revert back. So this one is checked. We have um, after the sale message. This is really cool. Um, you can find this inside of our um, inside of our script uh, our script section of of Slack. Um, you can copy and paste this inside of your DSM, which I highly recommend you do. Um, so every time you place an order inside a DSM, um, this message will automatically be sent, and basically it says thank you for your order. 
we have forwarded the order to our warehouse for processing. As soon as your item is shipped, I will provide you with the tracking number so you can track your shipment. Usually it takes two to three working days to process the order. Shipping itself can take about three to six days more, depending on your shipping location and excluding weekends. And then we say, but I'm sure you will receive your package sooner than that. Thank you again, have a great day. And then I would put your, um, your name down there. So basically what we're saying is, is that um, we've processed your order for shipping. We'll send you a track and when we get it, we give them um, some days to, um, to go by. So basically what we're doing is, is uh, we are under promising and we're over delivering. Um, that's what we want to do in drop shipping. Um, I do not set my feedbacks for automatic feedback. I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, the first reason is uh, I don't typically like to give feedback without getting feedback first uh, because a lot of the times it deters um, sellers from automatically leaving you a bad feedback because you haven't left one for them. Um, now from time to time, you know, some of the newer uh, buyers on eBay, they don't know this, so they'll, you know, they can leave you negatives and it happens, but this will, I feel this deters a lot of them from doing it because they know that you can, you know, list one as well. Even if eBay will take it off, you can still do it. So what I would do is if all else fails, I would just say, you know, I would leave a negative feedback for the customer and I would say, I try to work it out with the customer. I've refunded their money. Um, they weren't happy with any options I provided them. I made sure they were well taken care of and they still left negative feedback. So that's kind of what I would say in that case. I have never had to do this, so I think it's working. So I do not do the, the feedback. So I have my VA go in and clean up my feedback um, every day. So she goes in and she goes ahead and leaves feedback for people who has left us positive feedback. And then she cleans up the ones that is 30 day plus. So if you have a customer that's been 30, that's 30 days old, you can go ahead and leave them positive feedback because they can't do anything um, with that product or leave you bad feedback because it's out of the 30 day mark. I mean, I'm sure they can leave you negative feedback, but you can have it removed because it's been, it's been so long. It's out of the warranty date. The other one is the, um, is the shipped. We, uh, we have the script up in our scripts. I'd like to let you know that your order has shipped and is on the way. Please track your item through eBay for the most up-to-date times and delivery and delivery day. We hope you are happy with your purchase. If not, please let us know and we'll make it right. Please shop with us again. Thank you for your business. So here we're basically saying, hey, um, you know, don't you know, write us every five minutes on where your, your item is to go in and check the tracking for the most up-to-date times. And that if they're not happy with their purchase, they go ahead and uh, let us know and we will uh, be more than happy to take care of them. Um, don't worry about this. Send feedback requests because we don't have this checked. Um, hit update. And let's move on to the next one. So the next one is, um, is your VA access. So um, if you have signed up for our product lists, and you want our VA service to go in and place them. Most of you have already done it. Uh, thank you very much. And the VAs uh, work really hard for you. The, they actually work seven days a week, um, even on Sundays. I try to, I try to let them, you know, rest on Sundays, but they insist that they have work to do. So, um, you know, whatever. <clears throat> So here, uh, here is how you do it. You just click on VA uh, add user. And we, I, we explain in your welcome email or in an email when you purchase a list on which triggers to uh, leave open. So we leave the dash open. We leave one and two open. We don't have templates. Uh, we don't show the price monitor. Uh, we don't show sales. We leave this one open, I believe. And this one and this one is closed. So that's kind of how I think it's two, one, two, three, four, four. Yeah. So it's one and two, one, two, and six, I believe is, is our code um, that we tell you. So we will also give you this information to add into DSM. So we'll give you a first and last name and email and a password. Uh, this kind of really means nothing. You just have to have something in this box 
for the access to be granted. So we will provide this for you in an email and you just enter this information in, you click one, two, and six, hit create. And then as you can see, it will create, um, it'll create VAs. So that is it. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, we are here to help you and to guide you through this process. I hope this video was helpful to you and you can uh, easily walk through your settings and make sure that they are set up correctly. And please let us know if you have any questions and I will see you on the next video.